Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 620. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download the workbook Excel Magic Trick 615 to 622. Hey, in this trick here, we want to see how to count unique, and you know I've done other videos on this, but this is going to be a wild array formula. And we're actually going to learn some of the really um, uh, obscure things that you can see in array formulas and what they actually mean. And we're going to look at a bunch of different formulas from uh, OK to robust to more robust and then to completely uh, most robust, meaning robust means the formula will work in all situations or almost the most possible situations. Robust means something so good it's hard to break. All right, now this was videos inspired by, I saw a post, someone posted a formula and said, here's how to count unique, and then Aladdin came in from the Mr. Excel message board and posted, uh, probably this is a better one. And it had all these little obscure things that most of the times will never come into play. But well, uh, uh, Aladdin's point is, if there is a robust formula, why not use it? So we're going to talk about uh, these formulas here. All right, we need to count unique. We have a list, and there's some duplicates, some duplicates here, and some blanks. So here's the formula. Here's a formula equals, and we're going to have some array. So we're going to do some product. And the first thing we have to deal with is the fact that there are blanks. So I'm going to say in parentheses anything in this range right here not less than greater than double quote blank right so that formula right there will give us trues and falses so we'll get false false the rest won't be true now I'm going to divide by and I'm going to use count if now the count if function is pretty awesome uh, there's one problem with it um, it won't be a problem here, but when we get down below, we'll, we'll encounter this. Uh, this range can never have an array. And there's lots of situations that bring it up. Maybe you type your, um, you know, your formula array in. Or even if you have a workbook reference and you close it, your, fo your count if in this workbook wouldn't work because that it converts to an array when you close the other workbook. So there's lots of examples of when uh, that really causes a problem. But here it won't. I'm just going to say, hey, this range right here, that's the criteria. All the criteria is there. Now, normally we hit comma, we type like Sue, right? We type Sue here, and it will give us one, two, three. But what we want to do is highlight all of this range right here. Now, there's a problem here. We will get a Right here, this is division. So here, this is blank, which is considered 0. So we'll get a divide by 0. So the way we can do that is this criteria here, we can ampersand with this, which is the join symbol, and do double quote, double quote. What that does is it converts this whole to text, so it's no longer considered a 0. So when we divide by text, it goes, oh, OK, that's OK. Now close parentheses. And by the way, you can highlight this right here and hit F9. And you can, what did it do? 3, 3, 3? 3, 3. Oh, I got it. Control Z. So when I put this argument right here, criteria in, every time it sees a sue, it's returning an array. But it puts a 3 here, a 3 here, and a 3 here. Now, that's not going to work if we're counting unique. But what's up in the numerator right here? Usually, what uh, people do is they put a 1 here, and then 1 divided by all of this, F9. 1 divided by 3 is 1 third. 1 divided by 3 is 1 third. 1 divided by 1 th by 3 is 1 third. Then the sum product will add it all together. And that's a very clever way of getting the um, unique count. You know what? I just wrecked my formula. When you F9 two times in a row, you can't. You, you, in a formula mode, you can only control Z once. So I have to go like this again. Broop not blanked. There we go. All right, so now when we put a closed parentheses here, 
control enter, it gives us five. That is, and this is the formula that allowed in post because he says, hey, you might have blanks, and if you have blanks, uh, you need to deal with the fact that divide by zero will give us a uh, divide by zero error, so please convert it all to text. Now, let's just take a look. I want to take a look at what happens if we take this out and if we take this out. So I'm going to copy this. And th that's a way to teach yourself how all of these parts of the formula are working. So I'm going to hit Enter, um, F2 to put in edit mode, and Control V. Let's just take out this part right here and put a 1, right? So right now, what's going to happen, we're not going to get the divide by 0 error. But because we don't have a not blank here, it actually counts one of the blanks as a thing. So we should get 6. Right? So that's what um, this part right here is doing. It's avoiding counting a blank. It'll always give you one too many if you don't include that. Finally, we want to see what happens, Control C, if we come down here and Control V. If we take this out, it's going to now give us divide by 0. And if you highlight this, and hit the F9 key to evaluate. You can see, sure enough, we have a, uh, a couple of zeros there. Now I'm going to commit this uh, uh, cardinal sin here. I'm going to uh, F9 two times in a row, which I can't undo, but I'll show you what to do if you get in that. I'm going to hit F9. And sure enough, now you can see you get the 1 third, 1 third, 1 third. But there's the divide by 0. And forget it. As soon as some product sees that, it just delivers a divide by 0. Now, if I do Control z 2 times in a row and I messed up, and I've already entered it and put it into edit mode, I can just click Escape, and it gets me back. So that's the uh, reason for both of those things. Now, there's still one other problem. And as we jump down through the problems, they get uh, the probability of them occurring is smaller and smaller. Now, a lot of times, you don't have to get this elaborate. You can use this formula right here if you actually have no blanks whatsoever. So that's why a lot of people use this. But uh, the point is, why not always use it? Just get used to using this, because then uh, any time you ac actually do have a blank somewhere, you will not get the wrong answer. But we could prove that to ourselves. We could type. Uh, uh, J O here. I can't find the J key. I'm such a bad typer. And Joe here, right? And then now they all work because there are no blanks. I'm going to control Z Z. Now there's, you know, that that's obscure enough. Um, but now let's look at a different situation. What in the world if for some reason you have wild cards? And sometimes people actually do. They put an asterisk there to to. Uh, record the fact that somehow there's a problem or there's a difference here. And if you really do want to count that asterisk sue as different from sue, notice none of our formulas work. Right? So then we get down to the uh, most robust of all. Um, and it works in all these situations if you have blanks or uh, um, asterisks or whatever. Um, and this is going to get pretty wild. Equals sum. Now, up here we use sum product. And um, some product is fine. But in this big, huge, uh, beautiful array we're going to do here, uh, we're going to use the if function. And let's just do it. Equals if. That's the first thing we're going to do. Logical test. If you have this argument in if is programmed to just have a single true or, or false, right? But as soon as you put an array here, uh, because we're going to have a big, long string of trues and falses that are going to tell us, is this unique true? Is this unique false? Is this unique true? Right? But as soon as you put an array into this argument, it doesn't matter what wrapper function, to use a Mr. Excel term, a wrapper function, whether it's sum or some product, forget it. You have to do Control, Shift, Enter. So why aren't we using some product? That's what we usually use. The reason why is, or one theory to this is, People will see it and assume, oh yeah, the sum product is one of those functions that can handle an array. So they just do Control Enter. But you don't want, you want your formula as robust as possible. So you leave the sum here, because the sum, as soon as it has any array component, it requires Control Shift Enter. So why use sum product? Uh, because it may mislead some people into entering the formula incorrectly. All right.
Now, this is going to get even more wild here. We have to have a logical test that will say unique, not unique, 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 not unique. Right? This is going to be quite a little wild ride here for the logical test. But let's just hit comma. Let's say we can create a string of trues and falses there for a unique comma. Well, then what do we want the sum to look at? 1, otherwise 0. Now, technically, we don't need the otherwise 0 because it'll put a false in. If we don't put that there, and the sum will ignore it. So really. If we close parentheses on the if and then close parentheses on the sum, that would be our whole formula. The big hard part is this logical test right here. Okay. Now, again, we're going to put an array here. That's where we're using the sum and not the sum product. Um, one way to uh, get a true or false for unique items is using the frequency function. Now, a frequency function usually you give it a bunch of data, some numbers. And then you give it bins like uh, 10 to 10 to 20, 20 to 30, 30 to 40, etc. But we have a problem here. These are not numbers. So we're going to have to do something really tricky to get the data. And basically, we're going to get a position. We're going to say 1. There's a unique item in the first slot. There's a unique item in the third slot. So watch this. We're going to first have to exclude any blank. So I'm going to say if this is all getting the uh, data. Uh, the d creating the data bin, not less than or greater than, double quotes. If not blank, that's the logical test for um, creating the data bins. Then what do we want? We were going to use the match. Earlier we used the count if function, but here we're going to use the match because we're interested in a position. The lookup value. Now, I just want to remind us of something. I'm going to put a space there to suspend that and come up here. Now, if we could get this to formula to work with wildcards, no problem. You can go read count if help. And you can read match help. And they talk about a character that can deal with asterisks. It, in essence, deactivates act, um, wildcard asterisk. You'd have to go like this, in double quotes, the tilde. Tilde is to the left of the number 1 on the regular uh, um, key keypad. N double quote ampersand. Now here's the problem. We mentioned this earlier in the video. That, right, as soon as you do this, it creates an array. So I can go like this, F9, right, has a tilde before each item, which means forget it. If you see a asterisk, Think of it as not a wild card. Control Z. Let's just see if we can enter this. Not in a million years. And the reason why is because the count if that argument cannot handle arrays. So unfortunately, this option is not available to us. Now we come back down here. And match actually can handle the lookup value, the lookup array. It can handle array. So guess what? That's right here. We're going to go in double quotes tilde and double quotes ampersand to join and take this right here. So now, just as we saw before, if you highlight this and hit the F9, now we've deactivated all those. And now we can actually do something to count them. Control Z, comma. That's the lookup value. And again, match is expecting a single item there, but we give it a bunch. It's similar to what we did with count. Uh, if, now we're going to do uh, the lookup array and highlight all of this. And just like we did with our count if, we need to avoid these um, zeros here. So I'm going to ampersand, double quote, double quote, close parentheses. Now, earlier when we used count if, it was counting. But here, if I hit the F9, it's finding a position. Well, that doesn't look very good. Control Z, what did I do wrong there? I forgot the final argument. Because um, comma, we need to say 0 exact match. <clears throat> now when we do this right here, F9, it gives us position. Earlier, count off gives us count, but here, position, 1, 1. So it only sees, when it sees this second one, it says, hey, that is in the first position. Then we have a 3, 4, and then a bunch of 9s for uh, these right here. Now, these 9s will be a treated as false when the first part of our if here goes into action, Control-Z.
Okay, now I'm going, that's the value if true. We don't need the value if false, so I'm going to close parentheses. Now, remember, this is all to get the data array. So if I highlight this whole if and hit the F9, now we get one with the falses, right? So the falses will be ignored by uh, the rest of our formula, Control Z. Now, that's position right, comma, but what are bins going to be? Well, we're going to use, because we want one, two, three, four, we need a string of that because the bins in the frequency function are the, the elements that count, right? We have our positions here, but we need all of the positions. This first data array with the if uh, match, etc., only has uh, the, w the position of unique items. So no problem. We'll just do row and then highlight all of this. Now, right now, it won't work because that's 16 to 27, but no problem. Minus row of 16. That won't work either because it'll give us 0 to whatever the, the bottom is. So we add 1. And sure enough, now that, of course, will give us our, if I F9 it, 1 through 12. Those are the bins for county. So see, 1, this 2 is a bin, but it will see nothing here because we see 1, 1 from our earlier um, array element in our formula. So this will get a 0. I'm going to control Z. I'm going to, now that I have my bins, I'm going to close parentheses. And now let's see this amazing thing. This is all frequency. And this is all to get some trues and falses. But if I hit F9, there it is. I get a 2 right there. I get a 0 right there. Uh, 1 in all these positions, because they're all unique, and then zeros for there. Now here's the amazing thing about what we just did, the logical test in if. Any non-zero number is interpreted as true, and any zero is inter interpreted as false. So Control Z. Can you believe that whole thing right there is just to get some trues and falses for a unique list when there are words or numbers and wild cards? You bet. Now, the rest of it we already talked about, comma, the value. If true, well, the sum needs a 1. And we, can av we don't have to put this in because sum will ignore the false, so I'm going to put close parentheses on the if. Now we're left with the sum, close parentheses there, and control shift enter. Is that not amazing? Now, if we were to paste this data here, right, it gets exactly the right answer. Um, so this formula will get the right answer through all of the possible situations, including when I control Z, when we have our asterisks. Wow, is that a lot of wild stuff about counting unique and little tildes and ampersands blanks? And uh, OK, um, we'll see you next trick.